Let's just also reflect on the sad news uh, we've been bringing you about um, television presenter uh, and comedian and called animal rights activist as well, Paul O'Grady, who's died sadly at the age of 67. His partner saying, it's with great sadness I inform you that Paul passed away unexpectedly but peacefully. Of course, during his career, the entertainer originally known for his drag persona, Lily Savage, as well as then going on to host the Paul O'Grady show, Blind Date, Blankety Blank, for which he won numerous accolades, including a, a TV BAFTA, National Television Award, and uh, also, of course, uh, a radio presenter with BBC Radio 2 until recently, and a long-time advocate for animals, hosting ITV's multi-award-winning series For the Love of Dogs, acting as an ambassador, too, for the Battersea Dogs and Cats Home. Well, joining us now, Emma Pryor, a, a television critic, and, and Emma, one reflects that um, well-loved, but also winning plenty of accolades, official gongs. Yes, I mean, he was awarded the MBE by um, Charles, King Charles now, uh, back around sort of 2008 um, for his services to entertainment. And he was an absolute icon um, with a real heart of gold, um, who a lot of people had a connection with, whether that was because of the humour that he brought with him, with all of his acts, or whether it was because they were just drawn to him with all of his, you know, um, animal programmes. He was yeah. someone I knew personally for... Uh, around 15 years and, and absolutely one of the most um, fascinating and warm-hearted, um, well-known people I've ever interviewed. And we, we saw that warm heart with the animals, but I, I gather it, he'll be quite acerbic and quite cutting as well. Yeah, I mean, he had very strong views about the NHS, but I don't think, I mean, I backed him on those views. He was very supportive of the, you know, the, the NHS staff during, uh, particularly during COVID. And that's because you've got to remember before Lily Savage, he worked in social services himself. Yeah. Um, he was a care worker back then, you know, when he came from Birkenhead to London before he found fame, he came with £15 in his pocket and he was put up at a mate's house in Maidervale and he, he worked that gig circuit and became well known for his sort of gay rights um, campaigning and people admired and respected him you know not just as a campaigner but as an entertainer um I, i've got to say one thing that paul spoke to me about a lot um in the last sort of decade was you know how he felt actually about we talked quite openly about about how he felt about sort of dying which sounds like a weird thing to discuss but when he just five days before his 50th birthday, his 25-year partner, Brendan Murphy, died of cancer. He was only 49 and he'd only been diagnosed eight weeks before. Mm. Um, so Paul's 50th birthday was really sort of tainted with that absolute tragedy. Um, and as he did towards 60, he re was reflecting on that a lot with me. And, you know, in 2015, he lost Jackie Collins and he also lost Scylla Black, two of his really fantastic friends. And then he lost Barbara Windsor in 2020. So he often said how heart-wrenching it was that he lost so many people that he adored but he was also very lucky he had a fantastic uh, support network around him and he, he always talked so fondly of Andre and his long-term agent Joan yes. he you know he really was cherished by all who knew him and and he had heart problems which he he acknowledged openly but interesting yeah. that Malcolm of course Malcolm Prince's producer we we you know fondly remember them together on radio too saying just yesterday yeah. laughing smiling and full of life I mean, that was him through and through, actually. I interviewed him just after he had his second heart attack, which I think was around 2014. He actually made a joke. He said that he was on that many heart drugs um, that, that when he died, they'd have to childproof the lid of his coffin because to stop kids from getting near it because of all the drugs in his system. And he actually said that one day, rather absentmindedly, he put his heart tablets, he mashed them up and put them in some cheese. And I said, Paul, why ever did you do that? And he said, because I'm so used to putting uh, all the tablets for my pets when they're sick, for my dogs, <laughs> into food, that I did it for myself. Uh, you know, and I said, what well, do you think about, do you worry about your health? And he said, I don't think about what could happen mm. next week or next month. He said, that's like thinking about a hangover when yeah. you're still at a party. You know, so even talking about death, he, he always just came at everything with such a joie de vivre. He was wonderful.